Okay, we're back for uh, part two of Typesetting 101. And uh, I just want to talk about a couple more features. We've already reviewed uh, uh, letting, tracking, and kerning, and learned the difference between the uh, single line text box and then the type area tool. So um, one of the things that I want to talk about now is alignment. Now, by default, all text is going to show up in Illustrator as left aligned because that is the pretty much the standard um, alignment for really all copy. It's the way we read. It's the way Johannes Gutenberg intended for us to see information on a page, right? Going top left to bottom right. So we're going to play with this though and sort of learn a little bit about alignment and just discuss um, how that goes down. So I'm going to pull open under window, type, and then paragraph. I'm going to open up my paragraph palette because this is the other palette for typography besides character that helps us really deal with uh, information. Okay, so one of the things that I like to identify first in the paragraph palette is this little button at the bottom. Um, you may have your paragraph palette showing up like this, but if you click on the top right hand corner where this little arrow and four lines are, you want to show the options. And really it's because I want to unclick this hyphenate. Okay, there's this automatic hyphenation inside of Illustrator, and you know, you don't have to hyphenate unless you have to. So I always like to turn that off first. It's just a preference. Okay, but at the top here, you can see we've got that depressed gray button is showing us that this copy is left aligned. So is our single line. Okay, and I don't have to worry so much about hyphenation there, but just for safety. So right there, we can see that we've got left align. And we've got the, the big three, right, in terms of alignment here. There are really big four, but... Um, Let's just discuss these first. So we've got align left, and the way that alignment is discussed in design is that you describe align left copy like this. You say that this is align left, but ragged right. Okay. Now ragged, as you can see, let me, let me get rid of this mark guide, really shows that there's indents in the type. Okay. That means ragged. And you can see this is a nice straight column. Okay. So when you describe align left type, you're really saying align left, ragged right. Now, let's bring that back up. We can choose, uh, let's skip over center and go to a, a right align, okay? This is a little bit less commonly used, um, but probably this, the second or third most common used alignment. Um, it's still readable, okay? Because we have the foundation of an align column and then a ragged side. So, say it with me. To describe this, we would say align right but ragged left, okay, because you can see the type is ragged on that side, right, different sizes. Okay, now let's talk about centering, okay, because this is a dangerous and contentious thing. Now when we center type, especially you can see it this way in two paragraphs, this is a very difficult thing to read. The reason is, is there's no place for us to rest in terms of how we feel about the type, how we read, because we've been taught to go from this way down to the bottom. And we've seen a line left our whole lives. So when we see type like this, it becomes very difficult to read. So with this much copy, it's almost ridiculous to insist on aligning center. Sometimes people do it. Um, it's something that you can do, so people assume that you can, but it's, you shouldn't always feel that you should. Um, so in very rare instances, should you align center? Um, because it will really will kill the reader in terms of being able to get through this copy in a safe way. So most common align left, right, with ragged right, and then align right with ragged left, and then center, we didn't say how to describe it, center alignment with both ragged left and right. Okay, ragged type is difficult to keep going with, right? You don't sort of repeat naturally and feel good about this as it goes. Now, it's not to say that you can't center align small bits of text. That's okay. But in a block copy like this, oh, yeah, yeah, try to avoid it. Okay, so now the other of the big four, as we said, is justified type. Okay, so if we see here, it's the fourth option. This is justified left. Now, what justification does is it makes alignment on both sides. Now, justified is something that you see often in the newspaper, right? And that's where we get the term column. So when an, an, a journalist says, oh, I write my column, what they're referring to is they write their justified block of text. And this is very useful um, in sort of reinforcing that there's a grid system in a page or um, 
in any sort of situation in, in a newspaper, right, is very common because there's lots of stories. So to show them differentiated with these invisible alignment borders, we are using this justified type. Now what justification does, which is a little strange, is, let me resize this slightly, is we're going to get different spacing situations going on in here. You'll see, all right, and in the middle of type, is these things called rivers, right? And there's not many going on here, but you do get sometimes these very strange alignments um, where, or I shouldn't say alignments, but spacings where things get just stretched in a weird way. Okay, now justification has a few other options as you can see as I roll over here. All right, so this is justified with a, a last line, a line left, right? So it really just refers to the last line. This is its center, right? Again, not something we're totally keen on. Right, right, not as common as, as a line left, but still doable. And then this one is justify all lines. This is where you're going to see the weird spacing. See, check this out. This is uh, something that looks like it comes out of Roman times. It's just a very strange sort of setup of spacing. Um, I haven't found many instances where I've used this successfully. I think it's just a uh, antiquated method, but I'm not an expert on it, so... Um, but I haven't, in my experience, found it to be extremely useful. So I like to, if anything, use align justified left and then any of the big three with, of course, center being the least used one. Okay, so this was a bit here on alignment, right? You can see how, how essential it is to work with that. Okay, so as we promised here, we want to create a situation where we can use this this text in an effective way. Okay, so I have an 11 by 17 um, document here, and I'm going to lay this out as if it were a spread for a magazine. So I'm going to take my type and I'm going to sort of span the, the space here. Okay, and I'm going to start to work with this copy. Now, as you can see at this size, it's a little small, so we're going to get it bold and large. Okay, I'm going to get it to about 16 point. And as I increase in type size, I also want to increase in leading just to keep make sure that I still have that balance between positive and negative. Okay, but this isn't looking very good right now. So what I'm going to uh, teach you right now is how to break type into columns because you can make a lot of copy look like less by breaking it into small pieces. It's, it's a, a visual principle called chunking. Okay, Right, we can remember things in smaller pieces. It's a lot like when your parents used to cut up your pancakes at the pancake house. Okay, so we can only do this to a type area tool. So um, what we're going to need to do is go up to where it says type and then, sorry this is off screen, but it says area type options. So we're going to go type area type options. Okay, and we get this window. And what this does is this allows us to affect this box in a cool way. So we've got rows and columns, so we're going to affect the columns, okay? And also, just at the bottom, something to note here is this idea of text flow. There's some cool things you can do with text flow, especially if you're working with multiple sized columns and different sorts of things. Okay, so we're going to break this into four columns, okay? We can preview that here real quick, and you can see that we've now broken this into four separate pieces, right? By, by doing this again, we are breaking the information into smaller bits and making it more accessible, okay? Plus it helps with a nice horizontal layout and we're going to do a few other things to make this more interesting, but first we're just going to break it into these columns. Okay, now there's these few other things here that say gutter and span. Gutter ref refers to this here, okay, which is this space that's in between these two columns, and then span refers to how wide the columns are themselves. Now we're going to affect these manually, so I'm happy with these initial settings. So I'm just going to say OK. All right, now I'm going to just take a look at what I have, right? The text is a little bit sort of smaller in terms of doses, so it feels a little bit easier to look at. But I'm just going to grab this side, and I'm going to drag it over, and you can see that the columns, the text is starting to sort of roll backwards because there's not enough information to fill all four. But I'm going to make these sort of of a decent height. And as I'm doing this, I'm sort of checking out live how things are spilling over from one space to another. Okay, now I have committed a typographic offense twice. Okay, I want you to see these two things here. All right, first is this one. 
I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this word, but it's there. It's by itself. Okay. And then if you look here, same thing. Okay. I've left these words by themselves. All right. I've committed a typographic offense called a widow. All right. And what I've done is that at the end of the life of this, this copy, if you leave a word by itself, you are widowing it. Okay. So it's a bad thing. It looks strange and it's sort of like, why is that one word just staying there? So what I'm hoping to do here is to like play with the type so that I can, well, I'm in a, I have a serious widowed situation here. Um, so that I don't leave those words by themselves, right? And things are looking a little bit better. All right. All right, I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Um, playing with my letting a little bit to see if I can sort of eke out just another word or two just to join those extra words on the bottom. All right, doesn't look like it's happening here. All right, so I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to do that. Okay, I just hit return. I sort of took, you know, I played God. I took the, the role of things here into my own hands, and I dropped down a line to avoid the widow. Okay, it's something that you just want to be careful of. All right, it creates what we call a visual anomaly, and there's no reason for it to be an anomaly, and it just draws attention and really just becomes a mistake. Okay. So we've now got our type broken up into four columns, only achievable with the area type tool. Okay. And we learned about widows. Okay. And just for information's sake, if we were to have a word for some reason appear like this at the beginning of a paragraph, that is called an orphan. Okay. So orphans are alone at the beginning of their life, and then widows are alone at the end of their life. A nice little design terminology lesson. Okay, so here we are. We've now got a title and some body copy. All right, I'm just going to work in here. I'm doing an option copy, which is option key and then shift. You can see with the option key, I get that extra arrow. And then I click and drag, and I can make a live copy of anything I'm working on. And I'm going to call this the amazing subhead. And I'm going to shrink this down in size. And now I have a subheader, okay? And I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here. All right, doesn't always have to span like the uh, the title, but now I have really three dynamics of formatting. I've got the title, which is the biggest and the boldest, the subhead, which is the next in hierarchy, and then the body copy. So these are sort of the major three things that inhabit type layout. Okay, and we're on our way to creating an article. Okay, now if this were a real spread for a magazine, I would have to be really careful of this centerpiece here, which is the gutter. Right, I'd have to make sure that no type was stuck in the gutter. And that's where I could then go back to type, area options, and then play with the gutter. So that way I can really sort of help um, not have type be stuck in between where the magazine folds. Okay, that just would make this a very inefficient and unusable article. Okay, so we're going to stop here and then come back with a third video where we're going to learn some fun tricks. Stay tuned.